Welcome everyone. It's a special episode of the Buck Stops here and we are taking a deep dive into the elevator. Now, if you're a regular fan or viewer of the weekly show that I do with Evan Nolan, you would know that I do a show or a portion thereof where it's like elevator up, elevator down. And the whole idea is who has made a Hall of Fame case based on their past week or elevator up or elevator down. So I was talking to my good friend, who's here with me, Chris Meridian. How you doing, buddy? Doing good tonight, Kirk. How you been? Doing great, thanks. And so we thought we were sort of like conversing and said like, why don't we do one for the year? Uh, so, and we came up with both 10 ups, 10 downs. We didn't tell each other what they were. But that way we could sort of like bounce off each other, uh, see if there's any kind of correlation, see if there's any kind of like massive discrepancy. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, like just, just to have fun with it. Because uh, 2023, like every year, is a fascinating year for sports. And some people have done so much to help build their Hall of Fame case, and some people have not. <laughs> yeah. Take the good with the bad. Well, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have. Excellent. Did just, yeah, did I just age myself? There you go. Uh, by the way, I'm Team Tootie. Okay, I didn't watch it that much to to, to be a team member. So okay, well, I, I I certainly did. I, I I will admit that there was. I I remember I, my brother who's older than me. I said like, so who do you think is better looking, like uh, Joe or Blair? Probably Blair. Well, I mean, that's what he said. Yeah, I I knew it was going to be an interracial couple when I said Tootie. But anywho. <laughs> uh, and here we are, but let's move on. Uh, I'm going to like, uh, I'm just going to pretend that we're playing golf and I'm going to give the honors to you. I'm going to say like, who is your first person? Because we both picked 10 that you had as an elevator up. And let's see if uh, we sort of. All right. Well, my first elevator up is from the world of baseball. Mm -hmm. Garrett Cole, pitcher of <laughs> the Yankees. Yep. So. I grew up with baseball pitchers, 300 wins that got you in the hall of fame. Mm -hmm. Well, the way the game's changed, that's not really, it's not really going to happen much if at all again. So what is somebody going to do? That's going to make them a hall of famer. Well, this year, Garrett Cole won the Cy Young award. Mm -hmm. He also notched his 2000 career strikeout. The, the strikeouts, that's, that's a big number, mm -hmm. but um, you know, he's 32 years old. 145 wins career, but he's got that Cy Young award now. And I think you're going to be looking at stuff like the individual awards more so than the numbers going forward with, especially with starting pitchers. Yeah. Uh, actually, Garrett Cole was somebody who I had. So I guess that's going to, that's yeah. our first uh, agreement. Uh, I also sort of like wrote down here, he is for this, this is a six year in a row that he was in the top five in Cy Young voting. And mm -hmm. I've noticed too that when we get a lot of Cy Young winners, I don't want to call them all necessarily outliers, but they'll be sort of like up, down, up, down, up, down. And yeah, Garrett Cole, I think this was very, very big for his eventual Hall of Fame case. Yeah, I, I completely agree. He was uh, one of my 10. Yeah, excellent. All right. Uh, I guess we'll just stay with the elevator up just to be positive here, huh? Sure. Uh, okay, I got one because you and I were both in – a football group on, on X or Twitter, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, neither of us are as active as we want to be both. Cause I guess we have other things to do. Uh, uh, but there, there's yeah, a, name, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's <laughs> a name that hasn't come up as much as maybe it should. And I think that this is pretty big. I, I'm going to put this in half Julian Edelman, half Frank Gore category. I'm going in football. I'm going with Mike Evans. Okay. Mike Evans for the 10th year in a row has this, he's, he's already done it, has cracked 1,000 yards. Mm -hmm. uh, only one other person has done that, and that's Jerry Rice. Yeah. Uh, he's not hurt. He's not injured in any capacity. There's no reason why he can't tie and possibly break that record. Now, I'm not going to come here and say that Mike Evans is better than Jerry Rice. Anyone who does is a moron. I, I don't I don't think there's a, there's any reason to say otherwise, but holy crap, 
he just keeps producing and producing and producing. Like, uh, you're a Packers fan. I'm a Saints fan. Uh, you take if, if I'm to say to you, we got you got Mike Evans, or you were to say to me, I got Mike Evans for a 10 year period. We're both going, all right. Yeah, the pretty exactly. solid WR one. Uh, yeah. Is he a WR one for the league? No, and he never will be. But you don't have to be to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's also got something I, I didn't even realize how like how big he was with this. He is a twelfth all time in receiving touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Which, okay, I mean, like he's in the he's beyond the top thirty in receiving yards and receptions, but. Touchdowns are a pretty big deal. He he gets them. For me too. I'm a, I'm big on narrative, and narrative is something that we're gonna. That, that this is gonna be a pattern that I'm gonna go on later. I for me, I will never forget when Antonio Brown walked away, or ran away, and there's Mike Evans saying like, what are you "Doing, dude, like he's trying to pull him off." Like there's Mike Evans trying to be a leader here. Like Mike Evans is. The best player who, when you Google him, other names come up. I I don't know that he's necessarily a first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, I, I wonder about that with Frank Gore when we get more into de- the deep discussions there. But there's something about this level of consistency, this level of clutch, and he did it again this year. So Mike Evans was also one of my ten. Oh, was he? Okay. Yep. So, <laughs> and and I had also you know, noted down the the, the ten consecutive um, one thousand yard seasons to start his career. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to have right now is we're going to have a, a just a large pile of wide receivers that have very similar mm-hmm. numbers. You're going to need something that stands out. The oh, I got laughed at in our group, right? So like yeah. I I joke <laughs> that I honestly think. Heinz Ward could go 20 for 20 in terms of semis and no finals. Am I wrong there? Because I got laughed at when I said this one. Uh, I got laughed at when I said that, but the wide receivers who are coming up with bigger resumes over and over and over and over, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our group is not pro Heinz Ward. Not particularly, no. No, Um, no. it's not it's not a shot at Heinz. I mean, again, I think again, you Packers, me Saints. Yeah. You Packers, me Saints. Uh we would both we're both like think very highly of him, but in terms of a Hall of Fame, I don't know. Uh Heinz is fascinating to me. Yeah, I I oh. think I, I I saw your your comment about that with you know the twenty oh for twenty in the uh yeah, I got laughed at in there. I let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think eventually as you know, the players that get into this level, you know, with the voting, the the committee, mm-hmm. I think they're they're committed to getting them through the committee, through the through the, the process and the, into the Hall of Fame. I I, I don't think we're gonna see the Kuchenberg and the Jacoby type um runs here um, that kind of cause the the senior backlog that uh, they're kind of trying to work through now. So I, I think once they clear out a couple of these wide receivers above them that, you know, like the Andre Johnson's. Uh, right. But there's, there's all these wide receivers coming, coming up below him who will pass him. You know you know what I mean? Like that's Larry that's Fitzgerald will pass him. him. Yeah. Larry Fitzgerald will pass him in a couple of years when mm-hmm. he comes on. But I, I believe there's going to be a little bit of a window there where he, he can get, hopefully get some traction within a couple of years after mm-hmm say, you know, Steve Smith gets in that, you know, they really push to get Heinz Ward in. But I think it's going to be a little bit of a wait. But no, I mean, something to stand out that's going to make you stand out from the rest of the from the rest of this group here. Um, getting back to Mike Evans, you know, that consistency, those touchdown numbers, the, the con, you know, continue to get that thousand yard season. That's that's going to be something that's going to help his candidacy as he go, as he gets and into he's that got the uh, title. He does have the yep, he's got the Super Bowl ring. Yep. Yep. So yeah. good call. Okay, cool. Uh, so I guess we, I guess we decided that we're doing all, all positive here. So no, I'll just, I'll just uh, throw this back at you then. Yeah, we, okay, we'll out we'll, there. I'll, like, I'll stick two for two, I guess. Here. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. stick with the world of football here. I all got right. another, uh, another one. Derrick Henry. Okay. So Derrick Henry became the the um, eighth player with nine thousand rushing yards and over eighty rushing touchdowns before his thirtieth birthday. Mm-hmm. The other players. 
uh, Jim Brown, Eric Dickerson, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, Marshall Falk, Ladalian Thomason, and Adrian Peterson. Never heard so, of them. Yeah, no, not not yeah. not really good company to keep. So, yeah. yeah, up up to Peterson when you know he'll he'll get there when he gets there. But uh, all of them are in in the Hall of Fame. So, mm -hmm. running back has kind of been a position that's fallen out of favor with a lot of teams as they push more to the passing game. Right. Um, but what what Derrick Henry has done, you know, stands with the the greats of the game, and you know you, you got to find you got to find a reason, and I think. You know, right there, you know, the, the consistency to, to get that done and get it done at a young age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't take Derrick Henry. I thought about it, but uh, so at least that's. You got one. Yeah, we have one. I mean, it's not even so much like a disagreement, just like one I just sort of like left off. But I'll say with football here. Uh, and again, I believe in narrative because you and I both follow all, well, most of the voters and some voters are very active in their opinion and some voters do nothing. I think if we were to, uh, this is where I wish Paul was here. Paul could tell you, could tell us exactly what, like what that amount is. That's Paul Lawrence, follow him at a PHOF uh, Canton guy. He's a great guy. Uh, but some of the Pro Football Hall of Fame voters, that's their gig January to December. Some they're not. Uh, for the ones that they're not, I wonder how much a narrative really plays into everything. This year, I'm going to go with the Taylor Swift effect, not with Travis Kelsey, with Jason Kelsey. Hmm. Travis Kelsey is already a Hall of Famer, I think. Travis Kelsey is, uh, I think, right now the top tight end. Uh, everyone sort of thinks thinks that maybe we, you and I can we can nitpick on his blocking. We'd be right, but we would both put him in the Hall of Fame, right? For sure. Yep. Right. Jason Kelsey is, I don't know if he's the top center, but he's considered the top center for a long time. Uh, six time first team all pro. Uh, you and I both know how hard it is for centers to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, I did not realize we were the same age before we went on, right? So, like, <laughs> we're, like we're both 50. Yep. And how the hell did that happen? Huh? <laughs> I feel cool. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. but, in our lifetime, do you ever remember a center that ever got attention, commercials, love? No. Me either. So here we have our first one. Uh, Jason Kelsey, very well also when he's done playing, I could see him being an analyst. Mm. Uh, I, I can't remember. I think it was a Thursday night game. They brought him out or something like that. Jason Kelsey is going to be one of those names that we're going to keep hearing about over and over. And you, myself, our group, we're huge on Richmond Webb. Mm -hmm. Richmond Webb is not talked to talked about anywhere because he doesn't do anything. Jason Kelsey will. Presumably. I, I don't know for sure. Uh, but I'm assuming that that's going to be the case because he can talk. He's got that it factor. He's got that lunch pail pale thing where it's like, like, how do you not dislike Jason Kelsey? Well, you know. so Kelsey will automatically vault to the top of the center list, whether he should or shouldn't. I don't know. I would like to talk more about Jeff Saturday, Nick Mangold personally. But Jason Kelsey has become a national name which has never happened before for a center. Maybe it has, and I can't think of one. I tried to, but I'm going elevator up for Jason Kelsey. No, that's a great call. Um, just thinking back to the centers that are in the Hall of Fame, you know, the Dermody Dawson's, the mm -hmm. uh, Mike Webster's. Yeah. You know the names, but you don't know them because you know them because of what they did on the field and the fact that they, they made the Hall of Fame. You don't know them for their tight commercial. Or their uh, podcast right. with their brother. You know, and you know, things this like that. helps. I mean, like as much <clears> as <throat> you know, like you might be listening to what uh, Chris and I are saying and saying, "Well, that shouldn't matter." You're right; it shouldn't, but it does. Yeah, getting their names out there, and especially an interior lineman. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we mentioned centers, but I mean guards are are overlooked in in many cases as well. So, 
no, that's 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 a great call on, on Jason Kelsey there. I think you're right on. All right, uh, where we go? All right, so two disagreements, but not really. <laughs> no, no, yeah, just different uh, different avenues tonight. Yeah, yeah. All right, what do you got next? Okay, well, let's do it something a little different here. Okay, auto racing. Okay, so I, I am a definitely I'm a big. Fan. I don't know much about this, so yeah. So I I really enjoy IndyCar racing, not mm -hmm. so much NASCAR, but IndyCar. So Joseph Newgarden has been one of the top racers in IndyCar for the last seven, eight years. He uh, currently runs with uh, the Penske group. They're uh, probably the best team out there. Ganassi may have a little something to say about it uh, championship wise, but every time he straps himself into the car, he's a, he's a threat to win. And he did just that this past uh, May when he won the Indianapolis 500. So that Indianapolis 500 championship along with his two IndyCar title championships really puts him in the in the sweet spot for for Hall of Fame induction that it, in the IndyCar Hall of Fame. Okay. Um, young kid, he's still got uh, a lot of racing ahead of him. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, he's racing with one of the top teams, so um, he's really become an oval specialist. So next year's Indy 500, he'll probably go off as one of the favorites again. Um, probably the the driver that was happiest to see Milwaukee come back on because that's two short ovals that. Uh, Back to back in uh, end of August this coming year for him to to win. So we don't hear a lot about auto racers. We don't really. I mean, the NASCAR does have their Hall of Fame. IndyCar has their Hall of Fame. There's not really one national Hall of Fame for everything. Um, but he's he's definitely on that on that path. And me personally, I think that that 500 win has has sealed it for him at okay. this point. All right, cool. Uh, so I'm going to go with hockey here for, for my next one. I got a little more of hockey down as opposed to hockey. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to talk about a player who I don't think will get into the hockey hall of fame, but if I ever had a vote, if I ever got in that committee, I would make a big push for this individual. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights won the Stanley cup and as we look here right now, uh, December 2023, who's the biggest star in Vegas? I don't know. Jack Eichel, maybe? Does Jack Eichel feel like a Hall of Famer? No, not really. No. Not yet, anyways. Not, not to me either. For me personally, the difference maker is when he came back from injury was Mark Stone. Okay. Uh. Mark Stone is not going to get in the Hockey Hall of Fame. I, I know that he's not, but I maybe he's going to get a, a word, maybe a name somewhere down the road. And again, it's an elevator up. Not necessarily who we think is going to get into it. Uh, as someone who sort of like watched, well, you did too, obviously, uh, the, the whole hockey playoffs, uh, just knowing how much, because like Winnipeg, the Jets were where I am currently. God knows where I'm going to be next year when we do this. <laughs> but uh mark stone was the difference maker he is the leader he is the grit he is the grinder he is everything on that team is he the best skill player no he's never gonna be you don't have to be to sort of like uh make that work uh i don't know i don't think he's ever gonna get in the hockey hall of fame i do hope that whenever Vegas sort of comes up with their own hockey hall of fame or their own franchise hall of fame, that he's the first person there. I feel like you bring up honor level wall yeah. of honor type. Uh, or, or, or however yeah. they sort of do it. Cause like every team sort of like does something differently. Like uh, uh, you and I, we talked about like maybe visiting the Packers hall of fame, which has done a phenomenal job from as early a day as they possibly <laughs> could. Right. Uh, but then like the Evan and I, we talked about the St. Louis Cardinals who finally figured out, hey, let's do a Hall of Fame. And they started doing it three years ago. I mean, they're, 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 they did it, so good on them. But Chicago Bulls just did uh, Ring of Honor, I believe. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Mark Stone, for me, if I'm somebody who has any kind of say in at least maybe a Vegas, because we're just, we're just a Hall of Fame. We didn't say whatever, right? So like if, if, even a Hall of Fame that doesn't exist, Mark Stone, the, Mark Stone, if that does, if 
he you take him out vegas does not win the stanley cup i there's no doubt in my mind no that's that's a great point i mean he he was a difference maker he's one of their top players he like you said that they don't really have a, a superstar but oh. um you know you, you need team players like that and he he filled that role to a to perfection yeah, I mean, basically, he's a discount Mark Messier. Okay, fine. But <laughs> there's 32 teams now. I mean, like, it's a discount yeah. Mark Messier can win you a cup. He That's did, right. in my opinion. Yeah. You know, I, I, I feel like uh, like I'm that guy who's that one person, like, uh, tell me I'm wrong or whatever. Like, I don't know. Um, change my mind. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. But yeah, like, like I'm huge on Mark Stone because like, like, like when the Vegas Knights are like one, it's like, man, who does that really help? I mean, this Phil Kessel, like, nah, Phil, Phil Kessel barely played. Mm -hmm. So, no, I mean, like Mark Stone was that difference maker. Mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that. I think you could take any other player out of that team <clears throat> difference, as much as Stone. All right, Perfect. good one. There you go. All right. All right. Well, I, I can stick with hockey here. I All got right. uh, I got a different player than uh, Mark Stone. I have uh, Chris Letang, defenseman for the Penguins. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that, yeah, go on. All right. So um, 2022 23 Bill Masterson Award winner, which is the award that for the player that best exemplifies the qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. Mm -hmm. Chris Letang has battled strokes. Mm -hmm. And is taking him out of the game several times, and it did again last year. Mm -hmm. Not as not as bad as the the first time when he had it. Uh, I think in 2014, but you know it's still something that he had to you know something obviously very serious health issue, not anything that uh, is hockey related. Yet he persevered. He fought through that, and he has just been a rock for the Penguins on their blue line, and That's a good the one. league. The league recognized that and selected him as the Madison Trophy winner, mm -hmm. which is one of those, you know, side awards compared to like the the Hart Trophy or the Vesna. But it's still an important trophy that the players really appreciate, and that yeah. he won it um, really is says a lot for for him, and that you know kind of pushed him elevator up. Yeah, it's not like the lady being uh, Evan and I sort of said like. You probably saw this, or maybe you didn't. It's like a, all right. So if I'm a hockey player and I'm single and I'm on a Tinder profile, hey, I won the Lady Bing. I'm not putting that on my Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, the Bill Masterton is it's one of those those things too. Yeah, no, that's a good one. I should I should have thought of that. Uh, I'm gonna go with basketball here. Uh, somebody I've had on the my personal fence for like about two years, maybe three. And his basketball playoff this year has sort of like put me over, over on that. He's probably never going to become a champion. He's an interesting character, uh, but it's Jimmy Butler. Hmm. And I, I, I think of Butler a lot too, because uh, I'm going by the calendar year. Uh, so Butler was not an all-star, but he became a second team all NBA player. Uh Whenever it matters, there he is. The Miami Heat should not have been as good as they've been for a long time. And a lot of it's because of Jimmy Butler. Uh, does Jimmy Butler become a champion? I don't know. Does he become a, a basketball Hall of Famer? I hope he does. Uh, two years ago, I wouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. But I, I do now. Uh, Jimmy Butler is, when it matters the most, there he is. And yes, he's eccentric. Okay, fine. Does he want to win? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does he try his best? Yes. You know, like if you're just looking at what he's done, like the early part of the season, has he been has he been sort of like mediocre? Yeah, maybe. That's fine. You wait. That's what Jimmy Butler does every year, and I'm fine with that. I love Jimmy buckets. I'm down. There you go. Yeah, excellent. 
Yeah, so obviously, you know, I have a little familiarity with him. Haven't gone to uh, – he plays college ball at Marquette, which is east, oh. of, east of me here in uh, Wisconsin. Okay. So, Did you see of, a lot of him then play at college? Um, we like catch the games on the TV. I didn't really go to a lot of games. Oh, yeah, okay. I saw it on, on TV. And, you know, you could see that the talent was there. And, you know, you mentioned that, you know, hasn't hasn't won a championship. He stays oh. in Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia wins a championship with him. Could be. Could be. I mean, the the NBA is so, so weird, right? I mean, like, the, the title does mean a lot, but that bar, too, when we talk about the Hall of Fame, and I've said this so often to Evan, right? Uh, T-Mac was a first ballot Hall of Famer. I love Tracy McGrady, but he was a first ballot Hall of Famer? Yeah. Sometimes it all depends on who's on the ballot with you. That's very true. That's why Chris Bosch wasn't. That's right. Kind of a stacked ballot there. Mm -hmm. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's a great call on, on Butler. I did not have him on my list. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go kick over to baseball again here. Okay. So, former MVP. Mm hmm. Had several down years. I lost, don't know who this is. Okay, but lost, yeah. More or less lost his job. Had to had to go out there and find a job. Took a pay cut. Yeah. Cody Bellinger. Yep. Had a real nice bounce back season with the Cubs last year, mm -hmm. and has you know set himself up to 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 be paid again. Um. Mm -hmm. So you know he came in, had the the great start with the Dodgers won the MVP award and then just had three years where he just couldn't find his Figured out. Yeah. 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 Um, and it left, you know, left the Dodgers end up with the Cubs on, on a reduced contract. Um, mm -hmm. Still was paid nicely, but still okay. from where he was. Well, um, not, not what you and I get paid, but yeah. No, nah, not quite. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, he found his way back and he is now, I think, one of the remaining free agents out there that uh, really can still get some bank this offseason. And um, yep. That's it'll be one. interesting to see where he where he ends up. But he's definitely put himself back on the map, you know, with that uh, with that season. Yeah, uh, I I was kicking around him. Uh, I'll I'll give you my response on a player. Maybe you have him too, uh, like in baseball that that I have uh, the last baseball player I have. Uh, my fur, my personal favorite one to watch, uh, that's Ronald Acuna. Oh, okay. I did not have him. Okay. Uh, so MVP now, uh, four time All Star now at this point. Could he join? I mean, it's a it's a long way to go, but Barry Bonds with the four hundred four hundred club. Could it's possible, especially with the change of rules. Exactly. Yeah, because he went from like a less than 30 stolen bases to over 70. So clearly he's, he's got balls. He's doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he had his second 40 home run season and he's only, he's going to go into the season 20 at age 26. Yep. So a lot of, a lot of game ahead of him still. Yeah. A lot of game ahead of him. And he is the <laughs> undisputed right now, best player in baseball. Uh, nothing against Otani who, I don't know. I guess it is against Otani because, like, Otani will not pitch next year. Hmm. Yeah. So, oh, actually, you know, can we? I want to want to take a side step here. Yeah, go for it if, if I can. So, just with Otani. So I, I said the seven, right? So it's like, uh, so it looked like it was going to be against the. Uh, the oh, still there? Yeah, there you are. Okay. Uh, so it looked like uh, when Otani signed with the Dodgers, it looks like it was going to be the Dodgers and the Jays. Uh, as you may have guessed, if you're a first time viewer, I'm a Canadian, so like I'm cheering for the Jays. So my first thought was like, he signed with the with the with the Dodgers. So like, damn! Oh, thank God. <laughs> Does what? that make sense to you? Like, like, like the way I sort of like said that because it's like, there's no way he's going to be worth seven hundred million. 
Yeah. So like, like with Otani, I, I, I had him a, like last week as an elevator panic button that just sort of like came into his elevator because <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, you get scared. It's like, okay, it's 2040. We're paying Otani 20 million. That contract is scary. Um, right, exactly. All right. You know, he can't live up to it. No one can. No. So, regardless of what he does, I mean, he could, he could have, you know, out of his 10 seasons, five of them as an MVP. But eventually, you know, it's. Well, well, unless they win the World Series multiple times. Mm-hmm. Right. But, and who the hell knows? I mean, like, that's the. That's the crazy thing about sports, right? Uh, the best team sometimes sucks. <laughs> San Diego Padres, I'm looking at you. Uh, yeah, sometimes you, you, you win the offseason, you don't win the regular season. Yeah, no, exactly. So, I don't know, um, but I segued away from Acuna, but like Acuna is my favorite player to watch personally. So like like if I can watch him, I, I do. Uh I do even though MVP war like votes, he hasn't been in that sort of like thing in the last few years, but he's still been he's still a four-time all-star. I, I just think there's something special about him. I think everyone's sort of like caught up to him in terms of who he is. Could be yeah. wrong. I don't know. But yeah. uh, the team success obviously helps, you know, when you're playing the postseason every year and, you know, you're getting the national attention. Yeah. Um, and now he's got the MVP award, like you said. So, yeah, no, great call. He's definitely uh, on his way up. Okay, cool. All right, what do you got? What do I got? Um, let's go back to football again. This one's going to be something, you know, this player has been retired for quite some time. Oh, okay. So this is going to be a little different. All right. Billy White Shoes Johnson. Okay. So this past weekend, the Houston Oilers, Tennessee Titans organization inducted him to their ring of honor. Okay, what, we have, yeah. what we have seen recently is that um, honors like, you know, ring of honors c- ceremonies mm-hmm. tend to bring players into the spotlight for the, you know, their, their national hall of fame. Their, their sport hall of fame and white shoes has been on the senior committee for quite some time mm-hmm. and was a semi-finalist this past year so he's definitely on their radar mm-hmm. and having this additional accolade even at this late of you know time within his his um playing career mm-hmm. uh, definitely can help him out now i know yeah. our, our group is um you know, we're, we're strongly behind Devin Hester for, uh, for his own Hall of Fame. But Billy White Shoes Johnson was, was the first best. You know, remember the, both the 75th and 100th anniversary pro football Hall of Fame teams, mm-hmm. um, all decade 70s, all decade 80s. You know, had the pizzazz with his uh, end zone dances. Mm-hmm. But he was just a damn good player. You know, yeah, he was wide oh, that's good that's and um, yeah, and so he didn't do anything on the field this year, but he, he got that honor. And uh, sometimes just getting that honor, you know, getting getting your name back out there in the ether, oh, yeah. um, can help you out. Yeah, when I go to Elevator Down, I got a couple who didn't, but <laughs> uh, no, that's a good one. Um, uh, all right, so I'll stay with football. Uh, Khalil Mack. Yeah. All right, so okay. he's someone who I think is a fence guy at this point but he he possibly could win his first sack title he's not there now he's got i believe it's 15 or 15 and a half uh he's a half a sack as we're recording this away from 100 but 100 sacks and a former uh defensive player of the year that's pretty goddamn good now the chargers are not sort of like uh sitting in the world on fire he's not getting as much attention as he would but he's probably going to get that eighth Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that is, that's a pretty big step in that, in the right direction for him. Yeah, for sure. That's a, that's a great one. Um, did not have him on my list. Um, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that he said that he's, he's right there. He's, he's on the verge yeah. and, you know, getting a sack title, you know, if he's able to, to put that together for the end, you know, by the end of the season here, right. another pro bowl, Yeah, you know, definitely mm-hmm. be steps in, in the right direction for him. So that's, that's a nice call. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go basketball. I am going with a non-player. Michael Malone, head coach, Denver Nuggets. So Why here's a guy. Yeah, okay, yeah. Here's a guy, took over a 30-win Denver Nuggets team, yep. and it led them to the championship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. They just continue to improve, improve. It doesn't help to, ha- it doesn't hurt to have uh, Jokovic, but, uh, or Jokic, but, uh, you know, you got to have the guy. Yeah, that tennis player is not doing too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a different one, different show. Yeah. Uh, um, That's a good one. But you have, yeah, you have to. The game today is so different than than it was. You have to be a different yeah. type of person to be a coach, and he's definitely got it. You know, he you know he didn't uh, didn't have any success with with Sacramento in his first go around. Learned, and now mm-hmm. is a champion, Ch- head championship head coach. So that's a good one. That's a good, very good one. Okay, uh, well, I'll stay with basketball, but I'm going to have, I've got a, a, from the woman's side. Okay. All right. Uh, so I might be the only Canadian who gives a shit about the WNBA. Uh, I'm also one of the few Canadians who also rips the shit out of the WNBA, but that's another story for here and there. Uh, right now, my favorite player is Alyssa Thomas. Uh, she plays for the Connecticut Sun. She's 31, and she just came off her fourth All-Star. But I, I I love it when somebody who hits 30, and it's like 30, like it's so old, right? But uh, but she, she, after 30, she just had her best year of her life. Uh, she was second in MVP voting, never was a top five person ever. Uh, what was her numbers here? Uh, 15.5 points, 9.9 rebounds, 7.9 assists. Pretty goddamn good. Yeah, solid set line. Yeah. Uh, she actually had more first place MVP votes than anybody else. Uh, she never was a first team all WNBA player until this year. She is now. Uh, I don't know if this is a fluke. I don't know if this is something she can build on, but. I don't think anybody built more in the women's basketball than she did. And I'm a huge fan of hers and uh, elevator up for not just the basketball hall of fame. There's the women's basketball hall of fame because she wasn't quite there. Right. You know, she only had three all-stars before she was a second tier player on team USA. Like this is a, this is a massive year for her. That's interesting. I um, don't have a lot of uh, knowledge of the WNBA, mm-hmm. um, less less so than even the NBA for me. And so, you know, I, I don't have a, a, a ton to add here. Uh, but from what you've described there, somebody to take a a career, you know, have a career year that late in their career and to kind of turn it, you know, turn it up a notch and really um, put themselves on the map like that definitely is a is a huge feather in their cap and definitely in something that as you said will will start to propel them towards a, a hall of fame it could uh, career well, yeah I mean, I mean like uh like well, let's just we'll go back to the nfl right i mean like if we were to look at andrew whitworth at age 30 and said like, hey, like maybe he's going to be the pro football hall of fame like we're not having this discussion <laughs> So like like I love it when somebody sort of like does that late in their career. I, like I I don't know where this is going to go with her. I mean I I, I don't know if it's going to be a fluke. Uh, I've done like sort of like a big thing about like how I would sort of like revamp the whole league, but that's another story for another time. Good, that's an interesting call. I, I like it. All right, go. Cool. What do you got? 
All right, I think this is my last one here. Okay. No, I got two more. I got one more. So let's uh, we'll go back to to the world of hockey. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. So, Connor Bedard. Yes, eighteen year old kid. Really? Okay. Yep. It's real. The hype is real. All right. I agree. Yeah. Okay. First overall pick, generational talent coming in there with all this expectation coming into a team where he is unquestionably the most talented player on the team. Everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. And he's just going out there and delivering. He's making good on that, on that potential. Maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit here, but you know, he's, he's, he's there. He's, you know, he's going to be the caller, caller, uh, caller, um, yeah, the award winner this year. Caller trophy winner. Yeah. Caller trophy winner this year. Um, the, the, the fact that he's been able to come in and produce with all this publicity leading into the season is what led me to say that, yeah, he, you know, he's on the elevator and he's going up. Okay, no, no, it's good. It's good. All right, so I guess I got two left here. Uh, all right, uh, I got Tyreek Hill. I almost had him. Yeah, because long story short, uh, he's real. Uh, I, I think, I, I wonder how many of us as football fans, and I'll throw myself in there, thought, okay, he's away from Patrick. Let's see what he really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the real deal. Not only is the real deal, he's making, uh, he's making Tua look like, you know, with that whole taunt, Dante Culpepper, you know, like Dante Culpepper, like, Hey, he's a, he's a pro bowler. He wasn't a pro bowler. Ryan D. Moss made him a pro bowler. Yeah. And and that's where we are here. Uh, he took a game off because of injury and could still become the first 2,000-yard uh, receiver. Uh, no matter what happens here, even if he doesn't play the rest of the year, he's going to be in the pro bowl, and he should be, and he'll go all start his career eight for eight. Tyreek is the real deal. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, the real deal, obviously, too, because like clearly they are megastars without each other. Mm -hmm. And 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 Tyreek deserves every accolade he can. Uh, he can he be a bit of a dick from our from what we know of his past? Yes. Uh, does Pro Football Hall of Fame sort of ignore that more than other Hall of Fames? Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, uh, he was he was in my um, in the mix with me, and um, yeah. one that uh, he probably there's like eleventh of my ten, you know, um, nothing against what, you know, I just felt that I'd, I'd rather talk about these other ten. Is really what it came down to, yeah. um, but you now the the seasons he he's having this year, the fact he's doing it with with Miami, that he's elevated that team to the level they are, made everybody else around him better, and that's what that's what a superstar does, and. Um, Mm -hmm. you know he's he's definitely he's their most yeah. most talented player he's probably one of the most talented players in the league that's ever played in the league so he's more than the speed and uh you know he's just the grass was greener on the other side you know, he, he wanted was. out would have thought. he wanted out and he got out and he's he's proven that it was it was the right call yeah i thought he was wrong well there you go i'm wrong <laughs> all right not so. the first time <laughs> but this is all fun still so. um, <laughs> alright well, my last player for uh, Elevator Up is uh, also for NFL Christian McCaffrey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like I said kind of between you know two different players here Terry Kill, Christian McCaffrey I ended up going with McCaffrey he had a uh, some downtime there with uh, you know leaving leaving Carolina he had some injury but falling into the, the situation he did with, with the San Francisco 49ers is just the best, the best thing for him. And I, as long as he stays there, he is just going to continue to put up monster numbers and mm -hmm. has the chance to really. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Redefine. I don't want to say redefine the game put himself, you know, above and beyond what uh, other running backs are doing today. Yeah, I, I probably, uh, actually, I'm surprised he wasn't sort of like one of my people that I was sort of like thinking of. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, McCaffrey has been incredible. I joked with somebody the other day. It's like, hey, it's like, uh, could you imagine like uh, 20 years ago, we wanted a black quarterback and a white running back? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, where, that's where we are. That's where we are. And that's a good thing. It is. That's a good thing because it don't matter if we really wow. think about the whole thing. Uh, I guess I got the last one. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to go with a manager here. Somebody who has actually a losing record, but who gives a shit? Four-time World Series champion, Bruce Boshi. Oh, okay. Uh, three three World Series with the, with the Giants, and he won another one with the Rangers. What more do we need? No, exactly. Uh, you know, I looked at him and Mm -hmm. the four titles i mean to me that that just what more do you want from a manager you know he takes two different teams to the the promised land like that yeah as you said you know that's that's it yeah and if you've got an issue with a losing record well then uh connie mac the ghost will like like a word with you like i don't know what more to say uh all right so i guess we're going to do our elevator downs uh should i start or do you want to start you can start this time all right, uh, so I'm going to stick with hockey here because uh, I got a lot of hockey elevator downs. Uh, maybe it's because, like, I'm in the prairies here. I don't know. Uh, so my first hockey down is Johnny Godro here. Uh, a <laughs> guy named Johnny Hockey. 21-22, uh, he was a first-team all-star around age 28. First time he ever did that. Uh, American. So, and how do I put this delicately? I can I can say this does not to be anti-American. A lot of players don't want to be play in Canada. They just don't. And a big part of that is the bullshit that sort of comes, you know, with that. If you were a superstar in a Canadian hockey team, you can't be anonymous anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I look at Steven Stamkos, you know, with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Why the hell would he want to leave Tampa Bay? A Canadian player who has won titles, is around a good team, and can go to the mall. There you go. <laughs> Pretty much enough, because it's not like you're going to be making that much on endorsements. You're not a basketball player, you're not a football player, you're not a baseball player. That's how it is. Yeah. Stephen Kitt Stampos... I don't even know what his voice sounds like. And he's like, he's been one of the top 10 players in hockey in the last 10 years. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what he sounds like. Don't know. But Johnny Godreau, he said, okay, like I'm going to go back to the States. So he went with Columbus. Columbus. You can be anonymous. <laughs> oh, you can be anonymous in Columbus. You can also be shit in Columbus, and that's what he's been. Uh, since he's gone there, his points per game has plummeted. He is nowhere close to being an all-star anymore, and Johnny Hockey is Johnny Mediocre, or yeah. Johnny Average, I should say. Yeah. So, again, I'm not shitting on him for leaving Calgary to go to this. Like, uh, that's not what I'm doing here, but yeah. it didn't work out for you, buddy. No, it didn't. Uh, the grass was not greener in his case. Yeah. Um, no, I, you know, I, I live here in Wisconsin. We don't have a pro hockey team here. At a young age, you I got, you got your Milwaukee Admirals. They're up here to play the Moose all the time. Huh? They, they are. Yeah. We got okay. We got my AHL hockey league. You know, it's 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 good stuff. But we, you know, we don't have an NHL team here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So I hooked up with the Vancouver Canucks because Milwaukee was their farm team back in the late uh, late eighties. Okay. So <clears throat> I understand following them how different Canadian markets are to American markets when it comes to the players. Yeah. So a player wanting to get away from that, not being able to handle that is not, it's not the first time, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just need to figure it out so that you can be in that situation that works best for you. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, you know, he, he didn't want to figure that out. Well, I, I don't even know for him whether that was the case or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It just might have been one of the like, one of those things where it's like, well, let's go closer home. 
Whap, whap. <laughs> like, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know the guy. I, I just know that his play has gone from top 10 to not even close. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Good one. Good start here. Uh, all right. I'll go, um, I'll go kind of local here. David Bakhtiari. Ooh. Okay. So, elevator down, but okay. not because of anything he's done on the field. Unfortunately, Even on the field? That's the problem. Unfortunately. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 2020, he has the ACL injury. Mm -hmm. Basically, lost all of his 2021. Uh, came back, played one one game at the end of the season. Um, didn't even last a full game. Came back in 2022, played most of the season, and was running himself back into his Pro Bowl All Pro form. 2023, he played the Bears week one and has not been able to get back on the field since. Mm -hmm. The knee injury just, it just hasn't, everything that could go wrong has has gone wrong with that mm -hmm. and it's it's really unfortunate because he was going into 20 you know in the 2020 season when he was when he tore it up and he didn't even do it in a game it was, it was in practice so you know just a terrible situation but he was mm -hmm. starting to get the all pro accolades he was starting to get the pro bowl accolades he was starting to be talked about he had signed the big contract he was definitely on a trajectory to be discussed for Hall of Fame. And yeah, at yeah, this yeah. point here, you just want him to be able to, to to walk around when he's when he's done playing. So another surgery this this season, knocked him, you know, knocked him out. He's still on a contract, got a big number going in the next year. Not sure really what's gonna happen with that. But um unfortunately the injury is what put him on the elevator, not anything yeah. He's he's done. Something yeah. out of his control. No, no, it's a good one. Uh, how many <clears throat> games has he played the last three years? Like less than so, three. one game this year, one game in twenty one, and I believe twelve in twenty twenty two. So I'm close. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Uh, elevator down. I'm going to with back uh, back to basketball. Somebody who just made his comeback, and I'm cheering for him. I really am. Uh, <sighs> I guess because like uh, you and I, we're both fifty, right? Yeah. Uh, as I've learned, you're <laughs> yeah, I'm fifty. Right? There you go. Uh, we're both old, okay? We're both old. Wow, fifty's the new thirty. Let's go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that, I'd like to think that when I was twenty-two, if somebody told me, "Don't do something," because if you do it, it's going to cost you millions. I would know not to do it. Well, John Morant's not that guy. No, he's not. He's not. Uh, John Morant is like one of my favorite basketball players to watch. Oh my God, he's so amazing to watch. Uh, but the basketball, the NBA just says, look, okay, there's a few rules that they have. Not a whole lot of rules. One of them is we're not pro gun. And he did it. And then he did it again. Twice, yes. <laughs> like I, I I can give you a pass for doing for doing it once. It's the second one. It's like what? After just like weeks after, which mm -hmm. cost him millions of dollars that will be affected for years going on because he the the way that works, he did not get an all NBA and he would have. He would have been an all NBA selection. Right now, John ja Morant, and I, I hope this changes. I really do. I have nothing against the guy. I just love to watch him play. I really love to watch him play. But I don't I don't know who it was who tweeted this, but it was like, he's not NBA young boy, he's NBA dumb boy. Somebody tweeted that, and it it's not far off. I hope that you get over this. You make your money back. I really do. Yeah. But 2023 was not your year. No. And it was all your fault. 
and I wish you the best. I really, really, really do. Of course, if you do it again, you sure show up in like an Instagram video with a gun, let go fuck yourself at this point. But like, <laughs> it's not a hard ask. No, no. Um, he was one of my 10 as well. Uh, elevator was, Downs. Okay, yeah. Yep, so he was on my list. And okay. yeah, absolutely. Like you said, the, the second one, you know, you had just gone through your public apology, mm-hmm. uh, team counseling, whatever that entailed. And you're you're doing it again. It's like, you didn't even get a month after the fact. I don't even give a shit if you go to the range with your gun. Like, go, go do it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know what the rules are in your employer. <laughs> yeah. Want to shoot a bunch of guns? Go do it. Who cares? Maybe you don't need to put it on the, the gram, <laughs> as the kids say. Like, God damn it, you moron. I, I don't have it's... a whole lot of patience, I guess, for people who grew up in the social media age. You know, I don't. I didn't grow up in this. <laughs> you should feel better, you dumb fuck. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's all right. Um, oh, I'm let's... cheering for him, though. I really, like, I love watching him play. I, I really hope that he cleans it up and then becomes a title holder. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Ultra talented, you know. Oh yeah. Hopefully, hopefully he's uh he's he's learned. I hope so. Yeah. Again, again, it's an easy ask. Yeah. Turn the camera off. <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, basketball was popular with me. I got a couple on here, so I'll go with one of those. Um, how about Mr. Draymond Green? One of mine. Yep. Yeah. Um, another guy that uh, just can't keep himself out of trouble. And this isn't the first time he's been suspended. He's currently suspended indefinitely mm-hmm. um, for some bad acting and um, in trying to hide a punch. Um, I hide a punch. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like I said, this is this isn't the first time. And you know, it's you can't make the Hall of Fame, you can't win championships when you're not playing. And as he continues to act like this, he's not gonna be on the court. I was getting some Bill Lambeer vibes, you know. Um multi time champion. Mm-hmm. Does Detroit win titles without Lambeer? I don't know. But Golden State won obviously more. But Draymond is... I'm trying to think. Did Lambeer sort of like have most of his issues late in his career? I don't remember. It was when Detroit started their their runs. So... Mm -hmm. Because you know, early on, I think he came in originally with Cleveland and then um, ended up with Detroit. So I, I don't know that he had a lot of issues early on. Because I think about the last three issues that he had. So Sabonis, Nurkic, and uh, Gobert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're all European. Whatever. They're all better than him now. Mm-hmm. And I wonder how much of that is him just sort of like freaking out because he can't defend him anymore. Don't know. Don't know. I mean, I, obviously, I, I'm no psychiatrist. I have no clue. But, uh, but obviously, Golden State said, like, screw it. We've had enough. Yeah. Well, there was the practices in the two with um, Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, yeah. Yeah. I think that was in 2023 as well. So, yeah, I mean, he can't even keep it up with his own teammates. Or keep... Uh, yeah. Yeah, Tom was his own teammate, so. Yeah, the narrative, I guess, on him is, like, there is an issue. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it, it could happen. We'll see. Yeah. I, 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 that's a great one. I had him on mine, too. All right. All right uh, so, I guess it's back to me here. Uh, yeah, Draymond. All right. Here's – I'll stick with basketball here. 
Someone who didn't play this year. Dwight Howard. Hmm. Oh, Dwight. All right, my best friend, uh, if he's watching this, and of course he's watching this. Uh, I've defended him for a Hall of Fame for a long, long time. Uh, carrying Orlando to a, to a championship opportunity. You know, deep boy for a while. But then once he went to L.A., everything went to shit. And a big part of it was he wasn't committed uh all right so like we know what the whole story with dwight howard is uh dwight howard like you you've heard obviously Mm -hmm. all right all right so we're both 50 and we both don't give a shit if anyone's gay right at this point why why bother yeah nobody cares uh when we were both 20 i think we both sort of like would would have went but we've evolved Fair? Fair. Yep. So, like, and I look at the Carl Nassib thing in the NFL. Carl Nassib came out in the National Football League, I think when he was with the Raiders, and most people went, eh. Nobody gave a shit. Uh, Saying that, I'm not saying that whether Dwight Howard is gay or not. Who gives a shit? I am saying, though, how because like the from 2000 to 2023 the opinion of that is gone to like bah, nobody gives a shit I, I I don't know anyone who cares in anything uh, I'm in Winnipeg I've been in a lot of places you're in Wisconsin Chris I'm going to ask you this when's the last time you've ever heard anyone use the F word as a slur Outside of watching it and hearing it in a movie, not not recently. Okay, so you had to think about it. So yeah. personally, no, God knows when. Mm-hmm. Okay, nobody cares about that. Saying that from 2000 to 2023, if somebody's going to rape somebody, we now give a lot more shit. We're now listening to the victims. Mm -hmm. can't say that as a society we did a great job in in 2000 we didn't but in 2023 if somebody says that they might have been a victim we're going to listen to that whether they're telling the truth or not I don't know but I'm just saying it's a different society so here we are in 2023 Dwight Howard didn't say that he came out but we did come out and say that he does things nobody cares but his acute but he only did that because his accuser said that he forced them to do things dwight howard is still a good player dwight howard has not been in the nba for a while what do the nba gms know that we don't well i think we know the answer to that dwight howard has always been a sort of like a weird dude. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Dwight Howard as a potential rapist? Forget it. Don't know whether he is or isn't. I'm not saying that he is. I'm not saying that he's not. I am saying that he's been accused of that. I am also saying that he is... interested in sexual things that most people are not. Which I don't even know if that's a bad thing, but like whatever the fuck. But either way, the people who are voting on the Basketball Hall of Fame are looking at Dwight Howard and saying, like, I don't think so. Because I know if I was that and I was a bit on the fence, I'm thinking, all right, well, he's really good here, he was really good here, he was really good here, but he might have he might have forced somebody to rape to uh he might have forced somebody for rape. That ain't cool, man. No, not at all. Um, yeah, he was not on my list here. Um, everybody des- deserves their day in court. 
if he has a day in court. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully the truth comes out. Um, but we can, we've all seen how just accusations can really sully somebody's name and you, you lose that name, you, you don't always get it back. So whether you did or didn't, that's up to you know the legal system to figure out. Yeah. But, It'd be one thing... If, all right, I'll be blunt here. Like, and this is me. Send your legal letters to me, not Chris. <laughs> He's not acting like somebody who's innocent. I'll just say that. Hey, like, uh, like, say whatever you want. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Dwight, I loved you in Orlando. Still do. Uh, but what the fuck, dude? That's how he ended up on the list. Yep, that's yeah, that, yeah. that's a, and again, it doesn't matter what I think. Mm-hmm. I'm just talking about what we think somebody will vote for, and yeah. I think this is going to be a massive elevator down, because yeah. again, there's no reason that Dwight Howard should not be off the bench for somebody in the NBA right now, except for the fact that maybe he might rape your eleventh man. Uh, anyway, <laughs> shit, was that? Oh. Our- <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Okay. <laughs> um all right well, let's let's switch it up here let's uh yeah please bas- basketball to, let's go to baseball okay all right alec manoa mm. how did that come up with this yes yeah so talk about uh, uh elevator down um yeah. so 2022 he's third in cy young he's mm-hmm. top 20 in mvp voting mm-hmm. um the best pitcher I think Toronto had 24 wow. years old. Yep. Comes into 2023 is their opening day starter. Mm-hmm. And by June, he's pitching in the Florida coast league. I'm more pissed off at myself that I didn't come up with that one. Uh, Cause <laughs> that's so obvious, you know, especially as a Jays fan. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think like when that was happening, I was trying to think of like, have I ever seen any player in any league in any sport fall apart like that? The closest I can come up with is Ben Simmons. Yeah. Who I almost sort of like had here, but I thought like this would have been great for the year before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, Alec Manoa was great uh, for this. Uh, God damn. I mean, I really hope everything sort of like comes back for him. Like I've, I don't even know what to say. No, a 25 year old season. Uh, so he's 26 going into this year. He doesn't really seem to fit into the Toronto's plans, at least their starting pitching plans. You know, ended last year with uh, near six ERA, twice uh, demoted to the minors. Mm-hmm. Um, just the exact opposite of what they expected after 2022. I mean, it's yeah. it's just such a difference, stark difference. Uh, you you just yeah. how does somebody fall apart that that fast? You, you're right. No, no, you're right. I mean, like, I, I should have come up with that. Like, I, I'm, I'm more pissed off myself that I didn't know. But, you know, as a Jays guy, right? Like, that was perfect. But, like... That's right. We're, we're a team here. We're, we're working together. <laughs> Appreciate that, yeah. All right. Uh, what do I got next here? Uh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Draymond. All right. Let's here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to basketball here. Uh, and, again, I go back to narrative. Uh, I'm going to go with Kyrie Irving. Uh, Kyrie is, well, he, he's got his own beliefs. So let's just say that. He marches uh, to his own drum. Marches to his own drum. I think Kyrie would be a great MCU villain. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, you know, uh, it's like he believes in what he what he thinks. And he'll lose shit to do so. Uh, Kyrie Irving, and you and I both remember when he was Uncle Drew. Oh, yeah, yeah. Commercials, he was, those are funny. Yeah, so, like, Kyrie Irving was, how do I put this? All right, Kyrie Irving, for his beliefs, and I'll say that he knows what his beliefs are. He's probably lost... 50 million, maybe more. What do you think? Like, a... 
Sure. I mean, well, he had the season. He decided he wasn't going to, you know, take the, take the, the pr- prescription. But, yeah, but even uh, more than that, right? So, like, so, like, so in 2020, like, in the 2023, so he put out a video, or not a video, but a link to a video that was anti-Semitic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh... Like, I'm not going to go here. I'm not going to talk to tell you any of you what you should do and what you should believe. You believe you. I don't care. I really don't. Uh, you know, <laughs> you and I, we had sort of like had that kind of conversation before we went on, right? yeah. you know, about that sort of thing. But uh, Kyrie is going to, Kyrie's anti Semitic. Let's just be blunt. He is. Uh, okay, fine. It resulted in him being traded out of Brooklyn. Okay. Gets traded to Dallas and they stunk. As soon as he got there, they went from a playoff team to an out of the playoff, out of the the tournament team. Is that not on Kyrie? I think it is. It definitely raises the question. He, that's the change on the team. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I can sort of, like, if I was a voter, I can alleviate myself or sort of, like, uh, separate myself from some of his beliefs that don't align with mine. That's fine. But you got there, and you, and you made the team worse. And the team you left got better. Yeah, that's right. They, uh, they did. Brooklyn took oh. off. Yeah. Yeah. So... And you're a border guy in terms of the Hall of Fame. Because, like, all right, so let's look at your career. Like, uh, you won a title with LeBron in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Got a little bit pissed off and said, like, I, I want to do this as LeBron. I'm going to do it in Boston. Eh, no, no, Boston doesn't work for me. Then you're going somewhere else. So it's like, you, you're scorched earth, dude. I mean, so is James Harden. James Harden's got an MVP. You don't. Mm -hmm. James Harden is the top 25 in scoring, which is, again, crazy. I mean, because Kyrie's got the title. But I I don't know, man. Like, I don't even hate Kyrie. I love the fact that Kyrie said to himself, I'm going to lose a shit ton of income for my beliefs. I don't agree with his beliefs. I want to be very clear on that. But I love the fact that he said, I'm going to do this because this is who I am. Yeah, there's something to be said for, for standing up for yourself and your beliefs and, yeah. and being willing to forfeit the money. You know, that, that was a, a hell of a stand that he took against uh, mm-hmm. what the NBA wanted him to do. And, you know, I know this is going out in, on the YouTube, so we'll leave it at that. Um well, yeah, sure. So, like we're we're not saying what you should or should not do. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that I respect the fuck out of the guy for knowing because I don't know whether he's smart, stupid. He could have an IQ of 150 or 50. I don't know. I honestly believe that with Kyrie. Kyrie mm-hmm. could be a genius or a moron, but Kyrie believes in what Kyrie believes in. Yeah, I believe that Kyrie knew what he was loot. What he was possibly giving up for mm-hmm. his beliefs. Yeah. And, you know, he, he's an immensely talented basketball player. He's mm-hmm. proven that. Sure. But he hasn't proven that he's a good team player. He hasn't. And I would imagine that, because that's a weird thing though, when we look at the Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, you and I were in that group that we talked about before. We know who's voting on the Football Hall of Fame. We know who's voting on the Baseball Hall of Fame. We have no clue who votes on the Basketball Hall of Fame. Right. Not a clue, not even how many. So, you know, for all we know, this helps him. I don't think so, but, you know, again, Kyrie's that interesting guy. I mean, he he reminds me of Killmonger in Wakanda forever, or not Wakanda, but you know, you know, just he believes yeah, in yeah. some, he believes in something even 
even if it may be wrong socially. And more power to him, I guess, but for the purpose of this project, mm -hmm. of the Hall of Fame, well, ain't helping him. Yeah, work Both together. Down. Down. Yeah. All right. Interesting. All right. Um, let's go football. Okay. So a year and two days ago, Las Vegas Raiders, New England Patriots had a game that ended with Chandler Jones picking off a lateral and scoring a touchdown with no time left. Hmm. Since then, Chandler Jones has lost his job, been arrested twice, mm, that's a good and one. is somebody that seems to need some help. Um, Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you don't remember the game, uh, you know, Google the end of the of that game. It's it's hilarious. I know, I know what uh, your game you were talking about, yeah. But, yeah. Jacoby Myers, yep. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Chandler Jones, he, you know, he was somebody that, that seemed like he could be borderline Hall of Fame. You know, he's, he had some numbers, had some all pros, had some pro bowls. Um, but just, you know, he's not even in the league right now. And he, he seems to be somebody that, needs help and where's the league getting him the help he needs um he's still you know even the league if the league tried to you know he still got to accept the help but there's something that that went wrong with with him and you know i kind of hope that uh he can uh find his way back to at least uh health yeah no that's a good one i didn't even think of that but yeah i wish i would have okay uh I didn't want to go with this one, uh, sing with the ball, but the narrative is also strong with this one. That's Russell Wilson. Uh, he's been better this year. Yeah. But Russell Wilson, the Denver Bronco, was a Hall of Famer. Or sorry, Russell Wilson, the Seattle Seahawks, yeah. was a Hall of Famer. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. Uh, I've read a few articles. I well, I didn't read a few articles. I just saw a few articles that gave uh, Donovan McNabb Washington Redskin vibes. You, you know, you know, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they're basically implying that Russell's playing himself out of the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm not going to say that Russell's been great with Denver because he's not. Uh, he's better this year than he was last year. That's true. So this would have been a better thing if we would have done this last year, saying that the narrative hasn't changed. Russell Wilson is no longer a top 10 quarterback. He's no longer a top 20 quarterback. Unfortunate and unfortunately, as much as we love to build our heroes, we love to tear them down. And I feel like that's what's happening with Russell. I love Russell Wilson. I would, if I'm in that committee, if I'm in that room, I'm pounding for Russell Wilson. But I'm not in that room. Not yet. Not ever. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think Russell's last two years, or the two years with Denver, even though, again, this has been a better year, he's done nothing for him. Uh, Especially when you go to that dollar amount. Well, it's the dollar amount is what they gave up to get them. Um, right. You know, that, that adds on to it as well. Uh, you're right. You know, he has been better this year. And when you listen to Sean Payton, when he came in off season before the, you know, before training camp, it just eviscerated what uh, he came into and did mm -hmm. not hold back at all. Naming names. Uh, you kind of wonder how bad it was last year in, in 2022 and how much of that really did they have to dig out and can Russell Wilson get back to Seattle Russell? I, I don't know. Um, yeah. I, it's it's going to, 
It, d- it doesn't a, help either that Geno Smith has sort of like become a pro bowler either. Right. And, you know, and like whether that means anything or not, but, and it shouldn't, but it, it will, uh, you know, like a good friend of ours is huge in Matt Ryan and Matt Ryan really has the Hall of Fame numbers, but he's also got the narrative of losing a Super Bowl 28-3, even though it was the defense that lost it. Uh, Cam Newton, who we talk about sort of like a rushing touchdowns, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Narratives means a hell of a lot. Sometimes right, sometimes wrong. I mean, like, I'll, I'll be... What the hell do I know? Uh, but like, like, like when Tiki Barber became a semifinal, so I'm like, really? The year he left is is, is when they went to they won the Super Bowl after he said like they couldn't they couldn't do shit. Mm-hmm. Couldn't win right. without him. Yeah, more or less is what he said. Yeah, but you know, Russell, unless he goes back to the playoffs and does something spectacular. They're gonna, he's going to be more remembered for shit in Denver than the massive superstar he was in Seattle. That's yeah, wrong, it, but it is. It'll it'll take a while um, for him to to kind of build that name back up. And, and there was a lot that went in, you know, off off the field stuff last year too that uh, kind of soured people on on him with some of the less ride and and things like that. So. Um, I'm pulling from, you know, I am he, too. Uh, he was definitely a fun player to watch. I uh, hope he gets back to, back to being that player again. And um, I, I'd like to see him end with success and get that hall of fame uh, bust. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. All right. All, All right. right, cool. I'm going to tiptoe back into the NBA here and uh, mention uh, Josh Giddy. Wait, what? <laughs> Josh Giddy. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. All right so, first big. Okay. Yeah. Go on. All right. So there was the accusations of a underage companion that uh, okay. is still kind of hanging out over him. Yeah. Now he's actually playing fairly well this year. Um, yeah. The team is kind of been promoting him for all-star voting okay but there's still the question of what's going on off the court that hasn't been answered yeah but to the point where you're gonna like say he's like a hall of fame up Uh, no uh i'm i'm saying that you know he's he's having a good year and could be on his way up but okay okay what's going on over here that's that's potentially something that can pull him right off the elevator. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it tiptoed in on that one. <laughs> Tiptoe through the tulips. All right, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I mean, like I, I think from what I've read about Giddy, that looks like that does not seem to be the case. I just never looked at Josh Giddy at this point as a Hall of Famer, but okay. Mm-hmm. No, I, I definitely not a Hall of Famer. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. It's um, it's it's more the the fact that you know he's he's actually starting to come into his own as as a player, and this is something that really is could is that elevator up? I thought we we're doing downs. Well, this is something that could really de- derail that that. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right. So when you did Stanton, I don't have a whole lot left here. Uh, or you know, I'm just gonna fill up with one last one here. Uh, okay. So selfishly, it's for something that I'm a part of, and I, I think Chris should be a part of. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're going to be a voter for this. Okay. Uh, for the United States Athletic Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's uh, obviously it's something that we're very proud of that Evan and I came up with. In terms of whether you should be in the American Hall of Fame, that's up to you guys. Uh, the great thing that what we've come up with is it's an open vote. You either vote for him or you don't. 
uh, we're going to put up people who have blemishes. Barry Bonds is up. Pete Rose is up. Uh, here's who's going to come up in about 13, 14 years. That's Megan Rapino. This is just my opinion. Again, I say this as a Canadian, even though I am the co-owner of the American you know. But hey, I can't. I came up with it, so right. I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, You're the Ralph Hay of the U.S. Hall of Fame. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> And, and if you know that reference, then you're definitely the people that we want to watch this. There you go. Uh, there, yeah. Megan had a shit 2023. She just did. Uh, the World Cup, she shouldn't have been there. She choked. I don't know. I shouldn't even say that she choked. She just, she's older and broken down and unfocused which is a bigger deal. Megan does not want to, Megan is, how can, how can you focus completely on soccer when you are a social justice warrior? Not knocking social justice warriors, I'm just saying, how can you focus? Yeah, can't. So, she was on that team for, for Team USA, who stunk. Just be blunt, they stunk by U.S. standards. She was the worst player on that team. And she went far right, which is kind of funny considering she's very far left. <laughs> uh, thank you. All right. So she had her little farewell tour that didn't sell out. Okay. Whatever. It's a woman soccer player. There, No one could. Then it was on her own league. And she got injured in minute two. And said, well, this proves there's no God because if there was, this wouldn't have happened. Okay. 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 Again, I'm from Canada. So if someone wants to be anti-American, I, I don't give a shit when it comes right down to it. But I hate a hypocrite. I think you're fucking full of shit, Meg. You didn't care about any of that. You didn't care about any of the stuff. Nobody knew who you were until you started kneeling. Just be blunt. I don't, I don't think anyone knew who you were. And that became your big thing. That became your shtick. I will never forget during the 2021 Olympics, which is still weird to say 2021, but that's what it mm -hmm. was. And I was watching most of the U.S. coverage because I don't know why, but it just was uh, just when I was in Barbados. So I'm watching all the U.S. coverage. And they made it basically all about uh, Simone Biles and Megan Rapino. I was there... NBC person, I probably would have done the same thing. So, okay. She's in a bus with all the other people there and sort of like doing all this talking and then nobody was even looking in that direction. That told me something. She is the person who just decides how everything's going to go in that group. There have been other people, now granted some of them are not exactly the best people in the world, who said that she sort of like controlled the narrative. Okay, so she does. Fine. So if she does, then it's on her. Megan, no matter what, what we want to say about her, or what you want to say about her as Americans, whatever it is you want to sort of like do, in her last year as an athlete, stunk she was shit and the American team was shit on a culture based on her shit I have never seen your country where some openly some people openly cheered against their country because of somebody 
when Megan becomes eligible for the United States Athletic Hall of Fame, I will definitely say that she should be there. Whether she gets in there or not, I don't think so. I will support it. I don't think anyone's going to vote for it. I have nothing to add there. I mean, you you nailed it. Um, yeah. You have somebody that, you know, created a caricature of themselves and then forgot about their regular job. And when their regular job came up, they they didn't do it. Well, so here's the thing for me, Chris, right? Uh, if you don't want to represent your country, you don't have to. Uh, the, I, I, and I apologize I, to the, to this lady who from Canada, she was pissed off on how team Canada represented, like she went to her, she was a bobsledder and she went to her team, to her, whatever it is, I guess the, the powers that be and said, like, I was physically abused by somebody in this. And they did nothing. So uh, she left and represented the United States and won a gold. You can leave. I think the biggest fuck you to a country that you don't believe in is to leave and win. Personally. That, that's, that's, that's what I believe. If you don't want to represent your country, don't. You have options. It's possible to do it. That, that's honestly what I, and again, I say that as somebody who just gave you a great represented re representation of somebody who said, fuck you, Canada. Mm -hmm. And one for the United States. And I don't blame her for what she did yeah. because she was not, because her voice was not heard. Yeah. You can leave. You can go. You can retire. You can retire. You can do whatever the hell you want to do. But let's also be blunt. If you're staying there, are you doing that because you want to make you want to be you want to be famous? Mm -hmm. You want to make money. Megan, you're I, I said this earlier uh with Dwight Howard. You're not oppressed. No. Not at all. Many years ago, you were. Not today. You're not now. You were the face of Victoria's Secret. And you look like you! <laughs> You're not oppressed. I don't... Yeah. There are people who are oppressed. I've met some. You're not among them. <laughs> so, like, you know, it's just shit like that that pisses me off. Go, go, go somewhere else. Uh, I'll say this here. Can I go political here, Chris? For your, your, your channel, you, you, you do you. All right, all right. So 2024 is coming up. I don't know who's going to win. Don't know. But let's say you're anti-Trump. Not saying you should be, not saying you should be anti. Don't care. I really don't care. I am saying this. If you openly say, I'm anti-Donald Trump, I'm going to leave the country and you don't fuck off. That's all. Works the other way. I'm anti Joe Biden. If he wins, I'm going to leave. You didn't leave? Fuck off. That's all. Because if you can say that, you probably are in a position where you can leave. Mm -hmm. That's all. There are ways to sort of like not represent the countries you don't love. I think that's what pisses me off the most. I love the country that I live in. I do. But if you don't want to represent us, that's okay. Don't. You're, I'm sure you feel the same way. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you can. Man, this went somewhere else, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was that was interesting. It was well spoken. Great. Um, Great for him. <laughs> 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 all right well i have i have one more left here okay go ahead what do you got david tepper owner for carolina panthers oh okay yeah i don't know did you see the 
the um, game this past weekend? Okay, you weren't alone. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't alone. The, yeah. the photos of the lack of attendance at the Carolina game were making that. rounds. Yes. Carolina, obviously, they, they had the number one pick uh, that they traded up for, selected yeah, know, yeah. uh, Bryce Young, mm-hmm. and that has not worked out. They went and hired a quarterback whisperer type coach in Frank Reich and shit canned him after, what, 12, 12 games, 10 games? Yeah, about that, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're a team that is – Again, going to have the first overall pick. This time, they've earned it. And they don't own it. That's going to Chicago. Mm -hmm. They are a mess. And a lot of it has to do with the the owner being a little too um, hands-on. Yeah. Uh, I I was also – like, I was kicking around doing Artie Marino of the Angels. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm getting vibes for this, but yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. So this team, unless Bryce Young figures it out, they are going to have a tough time digging out of the hole they're in because mm-hmm. the first overall picks, they, they either cost you a ton, which they paid last year, or you have to be really bad and hope you hit on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so far they paid a ton and they have not hit on it. So, um, well, as a Saints fan, this is okay for me. So, sure, <laughs> absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I, I, his involvement seems to have been more than, uh, what, uh, was needed. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's no, kinda, it's, that's a good, that's a good, uh, tale under here. Yeah. Yeah. When you have a professional football game where plenty of seats are available, that's, that's not typical. It's not, uh, so, Chris, I'm thinking we should do this like a monthly. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. yeah I like that. Uh, so with that, uh, as this is sort of like going to be the end of the year, so I'll just sort of do my sort of like end of year plugs. Uh, <laughs> check out the weekly show I do with Evan Nolan. Uh, it's a Hall of Fame show that we do. Uh, Vinny Los Penuso does a great show with us uh, where he makes Hall of Fame cases for people sometimes you've never heard of. But they're all always awesome. He does a great job. He does. He finds some really interesting characters to um, present their cases and uh, convincing cases in some in some instances. No, he yeah, he really does. Uh, also, too, uh, I'm gonna give him another plug. Uh, he's set up a few interviews that I've done uh, that are gonna be coming up here at nonhalloffame.com. So uh, he set up an interview that I did with uh, Melvin Thrower, the son of Willie Thrower the first uh, black quarterback in the NFL. So that's going to be coming up soon. Uh, So thanks for Vinny for setting that up. Uh, I'm really excited about that because that was, that was a lot of fun. (laughs) That really was. Uh, Also too, uh, it's not always about sports here. How the hell was this a hit? (laughs) Uh, So I just did another show about uh, tiny Tim. You ever heard of him? I have, as you mentioned earlier, tiptoe through the tulips. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> and we did not want to tip through through those two loves, but uh, that is a show that we do here in the Buckner-verse. Uh, with that, wherever you are, wherever you may be, stay safe, everyone. Have a great day. Good night.